Welcome back! Doc Brown has gone missing in time, and his DeLorean mysteriously appeared at his house here in Hill Valley. But why, and where is he? Well, we were hot on the trail, and we have a clue here, which is a shoe, that led us to this lady, Edna Strickland, the sister of our vice principal. Let's see if she can tell us a little bit more about the shoe, and maybe point us to a date. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! <laughs> yes? When did you lose the shoe? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But, oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh, yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes, the day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah. Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. I don't think she approves of the speakeasy. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No. No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history, my Aunt Fanny! <laughs> yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? A video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square, right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Well, maybe we can look through there, but we need a general time uh, when this video store went up. Doing some stargazing? No, oh, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that... Chip Chatter! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! I guess Tiff Tannen is the uh, member of the Tannen family between Biff and Griff, I guess. Don't let me keep you from your business. Oh my goodness. I sure wouldn't want to be her neighbor. Well, let's see if we can use her binoculars and get a look at what that video store looks like. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Valley video. There's Biff. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. <laughs> okay, so it's sometime before 1932, so that narrows it down a little bit. Let's go check out her newspaper collection. Don't touch those. 
My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. We don't have jam. Come on, Edna. What else has she got? Candy. Oh, the candy looks older than I am. Also, George Orwell's 1984. Good read. Uh, let's see what she's got here on the wall. Some pictures. Maybe family pictures? <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? <laughs> Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder if he's always been bald. Marshall Strickland. My grandfather gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. That uh, comment is a reference to a deleted scene from Back to the Future Part 3 in which uh, Marshall Strickland actually was gunned down uh, by Mad Dog Tannen, but that never actually made it into the final movie. Um, as you might have seen in the opening credits, uh, Bob Gale, who co-wrote all three of the Back to the Future movies, is uh, serving as a uh, consultant for the writing of this game. And this could be his way of trying to make that canon, to a certain extent. Jeez, they all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> they kind of do. Radiator. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Then don't touch anything. Oh, we're totally going to touch some stuff here. Let's go into those newspapers. They're not meticulously organized. They're kind of all over the room. Let's see. Ground broken on sight of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. Oh no! My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Uh-oh. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Ow! Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Oh, wow. Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Something tells me the police uh, have heard that from her quite a bit. Nice outfit. Ah, good old Mr. Fusion. Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? It's, uh, my uniform. Uh, didn't I tell you? I, uh, I got a job. At the Model T factory? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no. Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? <laughs> Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? Good boy. One really cool thing is, uh, and I didn't show this, but in Edna's apartment, if you don't narrow down the dates uh, to around 1932 or 1 by looking at the video store, you can look through the newspapers while she's gone, and you can get some headlines that reference the events of the movies, which is kind of cool. Well, let's turn on the time circuits. Time circuits? Ah, flux capacitor. Uh, fluxy. Fluxy indeed. Let's enter the date. Okay. If Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc.
Ah, oh, so good to hear this music. Eighty-eight miles per hour. Us. <laughs> Car of the future. That's kind of appropriate. I love how we always hide behind a billboard when we go to the past like this. Well, most of the time, not 1885. So what adventures await us in 1931? Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Mr. Sandman. Or maybe not. <laughs> I love how Marty almost always gets hit by a car when he crosses the street every time he goes back to the past. You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... She's pretty aggressive here, and seemingly rather biased uh, toward, uh... Carl Sagan or Doc Brown about this uh, fire. How'd Doc get himself into Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? This lady's not a very good reporter. There's got to be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. Well, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yeah. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery. Oh, wow. Well, if Doc has gotten mixed up with these folks, then we need to come after them. Yeah, tell them, go ahead, make my day. <laughs> make your day what? Never mind, I'll play around with it and see if I can come up with something better. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Now this is really cool. You can choose a name, um, a fictional name to call yourself throughout the game, but unfortunately, it seems to only work with Episode 1. Uh, the last time I played this game, it stuck with uh, Harry Callahan as my name throughout the other episodes, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick that one. Harry Callahan. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Callahan. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. Oh. 
I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet. I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no. Down, boy. Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. <laughs> Doc. I gotta find Doc. She sure loves telling people to look stuff up, doesn't she? Well, we are here in 1931. Edna's a reporter and Doc has been detained for the speakeasy fire. So we're going to have to find out what's going on here. And we'll have to find out where Doc is being held in the next video.